Bless and good night and greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. I welcome you tonight to Online Fire Friday, Online Fire Friday service. Do me a favor, just like and share this broadcast. Let it be a blessing to someone in the kingdom of God. Let it be a blessing to your friends, your family, your loved ones. Just share, 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 share this word tonight. We are on tonight with Online Fire Friday. I'm just going to play this song. I don't own the rights to this song and this music and i'm just going to play this song while you like and share and invite others tonight amen Thanks. so we lift you god we bless your holy name we're amazing as you are oh yes you are You are my Peace, my brother. Peace, my brother. Oh, yes, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah again. Welcome, 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 welcome. Welcome to Online Fire Friday tonight. I'm Apostle Darren Rambley. As I asked you before, before I played the song, I just wanted you to like and share the broadcast tonight. <laughs> share the broadcast tonight. Let it be a blessing to someone. Father, tonight, oh God, I come in no other name but in the name of your son, Jesus, giving you the praise, the honor, the glory, the thanks, oh God, because you are a good God tonight, God, tonight, Father, I bring your people, Father, before you. And I ask you, God, to anoint them. I ask you, God, to consecrate them. Tonight, oh God, I come against every spirit of Leviathan, every spirit of Absalom, every spirit of Jezebel, every spirit of Python, every, every spirit, Lord, that will try to twist this word tonight. I just bind it and put it down and destroy it right now in the name of Jesus. I declare and I decree, oh God, that your people will be open to your word tonight. Would you just say tonight, say, Father, I come to you and I open my spirit to hear your word tonight. Your word, Lord, in the Bible, it's your word. It's not my word. That's your voice. That's your word. That's your answer. That's your solution to my problem, oh God. And tonight, oh God, I thank you for your word. I declare tonight, God, I will hear your word. I will listen to your word. I will honor your word. I will obey your word as your word is preached tonight, God. Every bit of offense tonight, I bind it and I cast it out and I cast it down in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of taking offense, every spirit of mis in misunderstanding or every uh, twisting demonic spirit of Leviathan that seeks to twist the word tonight, I just bind them and cast them out in the name of Jesus. 
Irish bit of boys tonight that seeks to come to interfere with the internet or with the stream or with the connectivity as this word comes forth tonight we bind these demonic spirits every witch every warlock every halloween spirit for this month we curse these demonic spirits that the, that the witches and the warlocks are, are releasing over the atmosphere we bind it and we cast it out and cast it down now we declare the word of god will go forth with power and with the fire of the holy ghost tonight and when your word goes forth tonight god it will break chains it will break yokes it will break shackles and it will set the lives of your people free from every bondage, every chain, every deception, every delusion of the devil. We break it tonight and we declare your word, O oh God, your word, your word, your word, Father. Your word, Almighty God, will be released tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, a pleasant welcome tonight. It's Online Fire Friday. And tonight, I promise not to be long. I know we have probably gone around how many minutes now? 11, 12 minutes. So let me get into the Word tonight. If you got your Bible tonight, I want you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew. I know I'm preaching like if I'm in church, right? But if you have your Bible tonight, you can have your paper Bible like me. I have one paper Bible I have another paper Bible with me. I love my paper Bibles. Okay, I'm really, really old fashioned in that because I just don't trust anything else but the word, right? I like, I, like, I love the paper Bible. So if you've got your Bibles tonight, it's from Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19, verses 16 to 26. Matthew 19, verses 16 to to 26 i don't know if i'll get through all of these verses i may get through just a couple of them that's fine but it's online fire friday so uh welcome someone invite someone share the link share it on youtube share it on facebook share it on whatsapp share it on instagram share it wherever you get the opportunity to share it invade invade social media platforms with the word of god amen Matthew chapter 19 from verses 16 to 26. Let us read tonight. Holy Spirit, teach us your word. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said to him, this is Jesus responding. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou will enter into life or if thou really is serious about eternal life keep the commandments he said unto him which jesus which the, the rich young ruler answered and said which commandments and jesus said thou shall do no murder thou shall not commit adultery thou shall not steal thou shall not bear false witness honor thy mother and thy father and thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. These were just some of the commandments that Jesus released unto this man. Right? But really Jesus was saying, on all of the commandments. The young man said unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? So the young man is responding to Jesus and saying unto Jesus, I have kept all these commandments, but what lack I yet? Jesus wanted a young man to know or a young, young rich ruler to know that the commandments in itself is not sufficient or the law in itself is not sufficient to, to, uh, to guarantee eternal life because uh, no one is able to fulfill the law, right? No one is able to inherit eternal life through the law or through good works. We can only inherit eternal life by grace and in grace through Jesus Christ through the forgiveness of our sins, through confession and repentance of our sins, and forgiveness of our sins through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, which is called salvation by grace, only by grace, in and through, and in and through God, all right? But Jesus was still conversing with him. The rich man answered and said on him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What still I lack, or what lack I yet? Then Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell 
that thou hast and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me but when the young man verses 22 I want you to pay attention to this but when the young man heard the saying he went away sorrowful or he went away sad for he had great possessions of great earthly wealth. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, When men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now there are tons and tons of revelational truths that are locked in that portion of scripture that I've read there tonight in Matthew 19, 16 to 26. I need you to understand it is not that God does not intend or God does not want or, it's not, or, or that it's not God's desire for us to be rich. No, no, no. God wants his people to be rich. God wants his people to prosper. God wants his people to have tons and tons of blessings and abundance, not just a spiritual blessing, but he also wants his people to be rich and blessed and prosperous. God wants all that for his people. I don't want you to misinterpret the word of God tonight. Listen, God wants the best for you. You need to understand that tonight. But this particular discord, this particular portion of scripture carries a lot of revel revelatory truths in it. And I am only able to release a couple of those truths. As I always say, the word of God contains power, kingdom power principles or kingdom-minded power principles as kingdom citizens that are able that if we can grasp and if we can embrace and if we can receive these principles and if we can put these principles into practice, then we can surely enjoy the promises of the manifestation of the promises that these principles are able to release in and through our life. As I read in Matthew 19 verses 16 to 26. And it says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master. Now we need to understand that this rich man is referring to Jesus as good master. He is calling Jesus here. He is saying, Good master. Good master. Good master. Now Jesus re immediately responded and said, why call it me good? Because we we also read in the Bible where, where God said, none is good, no, not one. Where it talked about the righteousness of God and we have now attained the righteousness of God, not because of our goodness, not because of our good work, but because Jesus Christ himself is the righteousness of God and because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord, as our Savior, because He is our Lord, He is our Savior, and because of His righteousness, we are now able to be called the righteous of God only because of Jesus. So He's saying unto Jesus, Good Master, what good thing shall I do that I might have eternal life? Now, he, he didn't realize that eternal life can never be earned or never be bought. This was a rich man. And many times rich people are of the understanding or of the belief that they can buy their way into the kingdom of God. Many people believe that they can buy a ticket into heaven or they can buy a, a, a passage 
into heaven or into eternal life with God. But eternal life can never be earned or never be bought with money. It is true and it is only true confession and repentance of our sin and forgiveness of our sin through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the Son of God. And that is what we call or what is referred to as salvation by grace in God. Verses 17, and he said to him, why callest thou me good? Jesus is talking here and Jesus is responding to this rich young man. He said, there is none good but one, that is God. But if thou will enter into life, keep his commandments. No, Jesus said there is only one good but God, but, but one, that is God. Jesus Christ never took away being equal to God. I need you to understand that. But if thou will enter into life, keep his commandments. He said unto him, which the young man responded and said, which commandments? Jesus said, thou shall do no murder. Thou shall commit no adultery. Thou shall not steal. Thou shall not bear false witnesses. Honor thy father, honor thy mother, all that the law has given honor it and do it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man responded and said unto Jesus, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What still I lack or what lack I? Jesus said unto him, if thou really want to be perfect, then go and sell all that you have and give to the poor that thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come follow me. I want to pause there. I want to pause there. Hallelujah. When the young man said all these things that I've kept from my youth, Jesus was literally, verses 20, Jesus was literally quoting some of the commandments to the young man. Now, I often ask myself, you know, there are so many people who always question. Now, tonight, I need you to understand, don't allow any demon of offense. Don't allow the Leviathan twisting spirit to come to twist the word. I've always, I've always wondered if Jesus had decided to, to stick in there, part of the commandments or part of the law, that many people like to say it's part of the law. Well, if he would, st would have stuck in there, go and worship God with tithes and offerings and, and your pledges and your vow unto God. I often wonder what would many Christian people, what, what they would have done or what they would have said or what they would have tried to go and search on Google or, or Yahoo on search engines on, on ways why they shouldn't obey God through tithes and offerings and unto God because many of them say that's under the law nevertheless I don't want to ever add to the word of God no LOL lol tonight I don't want to ever add to the word of God and I'm not preaching on tithing and I'm not preaching on, on, on I'm, I'm trying to manipulate you through the word of God I'll never do that but Jesus was actually testing this young man's heart Jesus was actually testing this rich young ruler's heart to see where his heart was. Why? Because it is one of the most difficult and frustrating things in being a pastor or a shepherd of a local church or an assembly even today. To know really where the people's heart is at. Or really where are the people's heart concerning God and concerning the things of God. I tell my wife over and over many times, I said, <coughs> I say unto her, I will not wish anyone to become a pastor if they are not really called to be a pastor. Because I tell her that being a pastor, being called as a pastor is one of the most selfless, thankless, honorless jobs in the world. I don't regret. I love, I love God and I love being a pastor and being an apostle of the Lord. But I say the truth. It's one of the most thankless, selfless, honorless, honorless, sometimes respectless jobs in the world. We are talking about the, the pastors whose heart are after God and after God's people, right? The wicked ones, they, they somehow they have their day. 
Because one of the most difficult things as a pastor or a man of God or a woman of God or a shepherd is to really try to understand where the heart of the people is. Because not everyone's heart is after God. Not everyone's heart is after God. Not everyone's heart is after honoring God and loving God and serving God. And some people's heart are in it for what they can get out of the man of God. They, what they can glean from the man of God or the woman of God. What they can receive, all that they can take, all they can learn, all that they can grow and just go their way. Unfortunately, we live in a world where many, this fallen world, where many are attached and bonded to this world and where many of their hearts are still attached to this world and the things of this world and unfortunately, that also includes money. I'm not preaching on money tonight. I need you to not log off. Stay logged on tonight. Matthew 19, 22 re 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 releases the truth to us that when the young, after Jesus told the man, you really want to be perfect, go and sell all you have and give it. And come, follow me. Deny everything you have and come and follow me. But the young, young man, when he heard that saying, the Bible tells us that he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions now some bibles the heading of this portion of scripture is headed the rich young foolish ruler i didn't say the rich young foolish ruler the young man's heart was broken the young man's heart was grieved as the issue was not so much how much riches and how much money or how much assets or how much treasures he had but the fact that his heart was on the riches his heart was after his treasures his heart was after his money more than anything else this rich young man was attached to the earthly wealth and to the possessions as such he went away and turned his back on the opportunity that was presented to him by the king of kings and lord of lords himself it was not a preacher offering this man salvation it was not an apostle that was offering this young man salvation it was not an evangelist that was offering this man eternal life it was the son of god himself offering this rich young man eternal life and this young man turned his back and walked away i need you to not misunderstand the word tonight god of course god wants us rich of course god wants us successful of course god wants us prosperous of course god wants us wealthy in every area of our life not just in our money not just in our cash not just in our physical assets such as money and gold and wealth and houses and lands and vehicles and stocks and bonds and investments but god also wants us wealthy in our health wealthy in our strength wealthy in our relationship with our spouses wealthy in our relationship with our children even in our relationship with our parents in our relationship with our siblings in our relationship with our biological brothers and sisters even in our relationship with our spiritual brothers and our spiritual sisters and also in the true riches of God which is the peace of mind the joy the righteousness the contentment that that comes in the Holy Ghost I don't want you to get me wrong tonight at all no 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 God's word don't ever contradict itself. And I need you to realize that. I know that some people may say, but apostle, the Bible doesn't say this. I need you to understand clearly. 
They would say, but apostle, the apostle, a apostle, what are you saying tonight? Why are you releasing this? I need you to understand. The word of God does not contradict itself because in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verses 19 it says a feast is made for laughter and wine make it merry but money answereth all things. This is what this meant in the context when it says Money answereth all things because many people would say, But apostle, why would you want why would Jesus tell the man to go and sell everything that he has, give it away, and come and follow me? Doesn't money answer all things? Yes, money answered all things, but we need to understand the context in which the word of God was released when it says money answereth all things. It procures not only meat and drink for feasting, but for all other things. As the heavens are said to answer the earth when they give it to those showers which it desires and need to make it fruitful. In Hosea 2 and 21, the word of God declares, and it shall come to pass in that day, I will hear, say the Lord, and I will hear the heavens, and they shall hear the earth. Why did I quote all these things? I need you to understand. When it talks about money answering all things, and when it talks about the earth responding to heaven, the clause or the phrase or the word, it seems many times people would think that, oh, they take it out of context. But I need you to understand, it meant, and it, it means, actually the meaning that says money answered all things, it's not an aggravation for us for sin or the folly in luxury, no. But it really meant for princes or governors or kings or presidents or prime ministers that they, that they ought not to waste that money or waste the treasure which is so necessary for the support of themselves, not only themselves, but also for the kingdoms, or the nations, or the countries, or the citizens of their countries, or the citizens of their kingdoms. This is what the word of God meant in Hosea 2.21 and Ecclesiastes 10.19. I don't want you to mix up the word. Because I don't want you to think that Jesus will contradict the Bible or contradict these verses. These verses were written for the understanding and with the understanding that money is not just a folly of luxury. No, but it's that princes and kings and prime ministers and presidents and governors will not waste the money, will not waste the treasure. Huh but they will support the preservation of themselves, of the kingdoms, of the nations, of the countries, and also the citizens of their kingdoms or the citizens of their countries so that they will not have to force and squeeze the money out of the people, out of the citizens by oppressive or dishonorable and dangerous practices such as taxation and slavery burdens upon the people. That is why we need to study the word of God, you know, so that we have a proper understanding. You need to always properly study the word of God. Study the word of God before trying to interpret it. Always that Holy Ghost. Even before trying to use or manipulate the word to suit, to suit your selfish, fleshly desires or lusts. You see, God's concern is that we don't love money so much whereby we are willing to do anything and give anything to acquire it at all costs. Let me tell you something. This rich young ruler idolized or worshipped his wealth and he was breaking the very first commandment that thou shalt not worship or serve any other God but the Lord God Almighty. 
So even though he was asking Jesus about some of the commandments that Jesus quoted to him, he already broke the commandment. He already broke the law because he worshiped his money. Why I say that? Because his heart was upon his money. His heart was not upon God. His heart was not upon following Jesus. That's why his heart was broken and he was sorrowful and he went his way even though eternal life was offered to him by the Son of God. You may say, Apostle, why are you preaching this tonight? How come you are in the New Testament tonight? Because Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart to release this word because Holy Spirit have said, Son, you really do not know where the heart of the people is at. Hallelujah. Many times people's heart are after money. That means they give up their family. They will give up their marriage. They will give up their children. They will give up peace of mind. They will even give up like this rich young ruler, foolish ruler. They will give up eternal life through Jesus Christ for the sake of the greed of of acquiring money. Now I need you to understand and I will keep saying it and I will keep repeating it. Absolutely not. Now I'm not going to make a I'm, I'm not I'm not going to make a statement here. Do you know that many cults, many religions, and many other various groups and beliefs believe and many people are willing in these groups and cults and belief systems and these sex, sex S-E-C-T-S, they are willing many times to sacrifice or even offer their firstborn to demonic false gods or deities as a sacrifice towards their pledge and their covenant with the devil in exchange for money. I need you to really, really, really allow Holy Spirit tonight to open your heart. God does not want us to love money. God wants us to love Him. That's why God said in His Word, we cannot worship both God and mammon. Mammon is money. Money must never manage or control us but as a child of God we must manage money and we must allow God through godly principles to manage our money I say all the time when money comes into my hands it becomes blessed why I say that why I say it? And I give God all the glory first of all because when money comes into my hand, first of all, I give God the glory. But the reason I say this is because the first thing we do when money comes into our hand is that we pray and we bless the money. Whether it's tithes, whether it's a love gift, whether it's a financial seed, whether it's a miracle seed, then the second thing we do is we take tithes out of it. Then we pray and we ask God to bless the people or bless the person. We ask God to bless them with their heart's desires according to God's word. Then we pray for God to bless them in every area of their life and their loved ones. Then we ask God to bless them with the true riches of God, with health and strength and peace and joy and righteousness of the Holy Ghost. Besides all those prayers, the fact that I, Pastor Jess and I, when I say I, I mean Pastor Jess and I, the fact that I don't squander or waste or worship money, but I manage money 
according to godly wisdom and I don't ever waste it. That in itself is a blessing. I always say once money comes into my hands, it's blessed. And in turn, I release those blessings back onto you. This is not a cult. This is not a religious practice. This is a supernatural spiritual power principle I use so that I release cycles of blessings in every area and in every way I release to, and, and spoken to flow continually over your life and over your family always. God expects us to be excellent money managers and not foolish. God expects us to not be wasters. God expects us to not be hoarders or stingy. If our hearts and our minds, this is going to bust a lot of things wide open here. Don't log out. Don't log out. If our hearts and our minds are set on things above that we like to cope, then our checkbook ought to reflect it. I will repeat. If our hearts and our minds are set on the things above, then our checkbook ought to reflect it. Don't log out now. This is this is truth being preached. I told you there are tons of truth. God expects us to never worship money. The young, foolish, rich man worship his money. Remember the scripture declares money is the root of all evil. And so many who never read the Bible always quote it wrongly. And so many who never give and don't like to give always quote this scripture and this verse wrongly. The Bible never says money is the root of all evil. And Jesus never said that. I told you before, God never contradicts his word. The Bible says the love of money. That's in 1 Timothy 6.10. The love of money. For the love of money is the root of all evil, not money. Hear that? And it, it didn't end here. The verse goes on to say, Which while some co coveted after, craved after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through it. That's First Timothy 6, 10. Hear it again. Hear it again. I love the word when it lays line upon line and precept upon precept. It never says money is the root of all evil. People always misquote that, especially unsaved people. First Timothy 6, 10 says, For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted, lusted, craved, hungered, thirsted after, they have erred or erred from the faith and pierce themselves through it because there is a craving for the love of money many have erred of been deceived and looked away from the faith and there are many preachers and many believers who have erred from the faith let me say that again because we love to say that pastor or that evangelist or that prophet or that apostle. It says many have erred from the faith. It didn't say there yeah, many pastors, many preachers. No, many. Many pastors, many preachers, and many believers have erred, erred from the faith because many believers worship money, crave money, thirst after money, hunger after money, idolize money, 
makes money, dear God, a stingy, selfish, and honor and worship money more than God. You know, many people like to hit pastors with that verse, right? It's not only pastors. It says many have heard from the faith. Not just pastors and preachers. Believers too. Please stop misquoting the Bible. And please correct people when they misquote the word. Stop recreating and stop twisting the word by saying money is the root of evil. No. It's the love of it. It's the love of money. It's the love of money. It's the love, the craving, the hunger, the thirst, the passion, the desire, the lust, and the ungodly, unhealthy burden, and evil, ungodly appetite for money, and willing to do anything to acquire it. That is what the Bible refers to and calls evil in 1 Timothy 6.10. Please get this into your spirit so you will never once more ever again misquote the Bible and quote it wrongfully and agree with wrongful scripture which is not written in the word. Jesus was offering this rich young man or this rich young ruler eternal life. But because a rich young ruler loved money, loved material things, loved earthly wealth, and was attached to it, so much so that his soul was knitted to the wealth that he had, that even though Jesus offered him eternal life, the rich young man walked away when Jesus told him, Go and sell all that you have. Give unto the poor. Come and follow me. The young man's soul was tied to his money. His money was his God. It was tied to the physical, earthly, material assets and wealth. In 1 Timothy 6, when I tell you the love of money, many people's souls are tied to their money. Many preachers started off humble, but they, the love of money has corrupted them. Similarly, many believers in the body of Christ, the love of money has corrupted them as well. Don't only, don't only bash the preachers. We as believers in Christ, all of us have been guilty many times of worshiping money, thirsting after money. Many of us are also guilty of being tied. Our souls are tied to our money. And I will show you from the word of God. I don't think any parent wants their children to not inherit eternal life. Because the Bible said, God sent forth his son into this world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, so that all shall enjoy eternal life. It's not the will of God that any man should, 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 should perish, but that all should come to eternal life through Jesus Christ. I don't think any right-thinking parent wants their children to not inherit eternal life. We are proud when our children are successful. We are proud when our children do excellent in CSEC. We are proud when our children do excellent in Cape. We are proud when our children excel and get first class honors at the tertiary and university level. But I don't think any parent wants their child to not inherit eternal life like this young rich ruler did. I'm going to release some apostolic preaching tonight to you. Don't log off. Share this word. Because the body of Christ need to hear this. If you don't want your child to miss, inherit, miss eternal life, stop teaching your children to be stingy. Stop teaching your children to worship money. Stop teaching your children to serve money as God. Stop teaching your children to rob God. Stop teaching your children to choose hell over heaven. Stop teaching your children to refuse eternal life 
and choose eternal damnation. And I know many of you are saying, Apostle, what madness are you speaking and preaching tonight? This is not madness. I am preaching the truth of the word of God that is able to set you and set your children free. Yes, I am preaching Jesus and I'm preaching the Jesus of the Bible. Every time we are stingy towards God, we are setting the example and the pattern for our children. Every time we rob God, we are teaching our children to rob God and worship money. Helping people is great, but I and I encourage it always. But please, let me just release an apostolic kingdom truth and let me clarify something to you tonight. Helping people using your tithes is not tithing. Tithing is calculated according to the word of God as 10% and nothing less. Helping people ought to be spontaneous love and spontaneous worship and it can be another 10 percent or whatever you wish but helping people is not tithes tithes is given to god through men and women of god every time we worship money and not manage it the way God has instructed us to manage it, we are setting the example for our children to become mismanagers of money and serve money as God. Every time we rob God, we also set the pattern and set the example to teach our children it is good to rob God. Our sons will never fall. I want to share a testimony. Our sons, my sons, Pastor Justin and I, whenever I say my or I, I'm talking about my wife and I because we are one, we are not twin. Our sons were never forced or manipulated into giving tithes or offering or sowing financial seeds regularly. I want to release this truth. But they saw the parents, they saw the pattern and they saw the example of their parents living a life of tithing, living a life of sowing, living a life of giving, living a life of pledging. Yes, every person in this house pledged towards the rent in MHA. Every person in this house, when we have physical church, put offerings. We all give offerings and we all tithe. We never once had to tell my big son or my elder son, Luke, about tithing. No. He saw the example of his parents our entire life. Not when we were preachers only. When he started working, he tied it. And he continues to tie. Whether his salary increased, whether his salary decreased, he still tithes unto God because he does it as worship unto God because we as parents, not as pastors, hear this, hear this, hear this. We as parents who understands that we do not worship money, but money worships us. We do not allow money to control us, but we control money. We understand that money is, our, money is not our God, but money is given by God to us. We set the example and the lifestyle of worship unto God with our money. That's why our children, we didn't have to tell them or beg them or, or manipulate them to tithe. No, there are some parents that will teach and tell their children not to tithe, not to sow and not to give. This is dangerous, why? Because we are no different from the rich young ruler. When we do this, this is dangerous. Cause by doing this, we are teaching and training our children 
Remember the Bible tells us in Proverbs, train up a child so that when he's old, he will not depart from the truth. By doing this, it is dangerous because by doing this, we are teaching and training our children that it is okay to rob God. It is okay to steal from God. It is okay to dishonor God. It is okay to not worship God with our money. And it is better to worship our money instead of God. That is what we parents do. Just like the rich young ruler, foolish ruler. You see, when we worship and we serve money on mammon as God, we will always be in lack. I don't care how rich you think you are. Whenever we worship mammon instead of God, with, which is money, we will always be in lack. We will never have the true riches, which is peace of mind, joy in the Holy Ghost, health and strength and contentment in God. When we set this example and pattern for our children, that's exactly what they will follow. We as parents need to give an account to God. We need to be very, very careful because when we teach and train our children to actually choose to not serve God with money, we are actually choosing lack rather than abundance, provision, or divine supply. My God, my God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Many times people don't realize what we sow, we reap. Our children follows us. If, your, if God has blessed your child with a job in the middle of a pandemic and you are telling your child when you get your first salary, we must go and buy the most expensive or we must go and splurge and you are forgetting God, you are telling your child ignore eternal life and cling to that which is temporal. Now I need you to not misinterpret this. Nothing is wrong if a child wants to take their parents out for a fantastic dinner or buy the most expensive food and bring it home and have dinner because you cannot dine out. Nothing is wrong with that. Nothing is wrong if a child wants to buy the most expensive designer Eclipse Eli suit for their parent which might cost $4,000. But by you teaching and deliberately telling and training your child, do not sow into God's kingdom. Do not give tithes. Do not bless God. You are actually teaching and training your child to worship money rather than God. Because if we cannot worship God with our money, that means we are worshiping the money more than God. That's why, that's why this rich young ruler, this rich young ruler, I don't want to misquote, but when the young man heard the saying of Jesus, he went away sorrowful. For he had great possessions or great worldliness, but he did not have eternal life. It is one of the greatest and gravest errors in humanity for a man to gain this whole world but lose his soul in hell. I'm preaching Jesus tonight. You may not like it. You may say, Apostle, you come to talk about money. No. The problem with money is that many people love and worship money as their God. And they allow money to 
be their idol and they hold on to money. The problem with Lot's wife is that just as our money is many of many believers, God, Sodom and Gomorrah was Lot's wife's God. The Lot's wife's soul was tied to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was tied to the sin. It was tied to the ungodliness. It was tied to the lesbianism and the, and the homosexuality sexuality, and the sexual sin and perverseness that was in Sodom and Gomorrah. And the, and, and the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Her soul was knitted to it. That's why Lot's wife looked back to that which was her God. And she turned into soul. And the problem in the body of Christ today is that many believers, yes, some preachers, but many believers' souls are tied and knitted to the things of this world, which money is one of them. I tell you before, you may say what madness, but when, when we teach our children to be stingy, and you say, but apostle, I don't teach my child to be stingy. We teach our children to be stingy when we are stingy. We teach our children to worship money when we worship money. We teach our children to serve money as God when we choose money over God. We teach our children to rob God when we rob God. We teach our children to choose hell over heaven when we choose money over God. We teach our children to refuse eternal life and to choose eternal damnation when we choose to rob God and not obey Him and worship Him with our money. I got to preach it. It's the word of God because this rich young ruler, his heart was broken. He was sorrowful and he turned his back and he went his way. When you as parents teach and tell your children, don't tie. Or when you set the example because you don't tie. I thank God for the faithful who does, but many don't. And it's not only in Emma, but in all of the body of Christ. Many don't. It is dangerous. It is dangerous. We are actually leading our children to hell and causing them to refuse eternal life. Because giving and sowing tithes is, is denying oneself and it's an obedience to God. Sowing even financially it's an obedience to God many of us can't be good money managers because we don't allow God to manage our money and we don't welcome God in our money I, I preach enough you know I don't need to keep re repeating myself I think I preach enough whatever example we set for our children that is what they will follow if we are stingy and we are selfish, our children is going to be stingy and selfish. If we rob God, our children are going to be robbers. If we worship money, like this rich, young, foolish ruler, our children are going to worship money as well. Like this rich, young, foolish ruler. And they're going to turn their back on eternal life. They'll turn their back on selflessness and cling to selfishness. You see, when we set the example and the pattern, for our children, that's exactly what they do. Like when we used to have physical meetings in the church building. If, you, if all you do is bad talk the church and bad talk your pastors, don't expect your children to come and serve God in church. We as parents need to be so very careful because we teach and we train our children to actually choose lack rather than to choose abundance. We teach and train our children to choose eternal damnation rather than eternal life. Because when we worship money, that is what our children sees. I told you, I never had to tell my children about tithing. Because before I was a preacher, we tied, we sowed, we gave freely, and we helped people. We did not take our tithes to help people and say, 
Oh, I'm using my tights to help this person. It don't work like that. So many people create principles that are not in the word of God to justify whatever they want to do. I want to thank God. I want to thank God for so many faithful people in Amhop who continue to be faithful in their giving, in their sowing, in their tithing, in their finances. Those who give unto God out of, some people give out of their pension. Those many who still have jobs and many people in Amhop still have work. Many are not unemployed. Even those who may have received a salary cut and you still continue to be faithful to God first. Thank you. God bless you always. Those, thank you for those who cook food, especially lunch, sometimes on a Sunday, especially when Pastor Jessica has to preach. Because you won't believe how tiring it is to preach with Holy Ghost fire and then go and put up a pot and have to cook food for this household. Thank God for health and strength to do it. But it's extremely tiring to say the least. Only if you're a Holy Ghost preacher, you would understand how tired we are after we preach. Many times a preacher looks easy on the screen, but it's never easy. It's a ton of selfless love and sacrifice and it's all done in love for God and love for God's people service to God and service to God's people so the those of you who cook pilau and stew chicken and shatai and chananalu and roti or bake bread or roast pork or bring avocados or limes or fruit or watermelon whatever you give I need you to know you are given through us but you are really given and doing it unto God and God bless you before I pray tonight I want to remind MHOP members that we continue to pay rent just a gentle reminder we continue to pay electricity bill we continue to pay internet and phone bill for MHOP and just gently reminding those of you who have pledged and who can't pay the pledge those of you who have pledged to the Lord I want to remind you honor your pledges I don't expect you to give if you don't have a job and you don't have money or you don't have a salary I don't want to manipulate you and I don't want to coerce you or control you but if you have made a pledge and you're still employed honor your pledge I do know that thankfully many are still employed and that in itself is a miracle and we should give God all the glory, all the thanks, all the honor and all the praise for his faithfulness. Pastor Jessica and I continue to pray for you and your family faithfully. We continue to fast and pray and lift you up before the Lord and I'm not saying this to manipulate you know. To manipulate you. No, I just want you to know. I didn't come here to preach for money. I preach the word of God. I don't want you to be like that rich, young, foolish ruler in the Bible. Whose God was his money. No. Never make money your God. Make money your servant. Worship God. Worship God. Worship God. Not just in your praise and your song. Worship God with your money. Give unto God what is his. Let us pray tonight. I've gone on too long. Father, in the name of Jesus, your son tonight, I come, God, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness. I thank you for life, for health, for strength. I thank you for peace of mind, for joy, for contentment in the Holy Ghost. I thank you for always showing up and supplying every need, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for you are the God of the true riches, oh God. We thank you, God, for your word and understanding your word. We thank you for the revelation of your word, oh God. We thank you for the truth of your word. The truth of your word God we thank you for the kingdom minded principles that are locked in your word that are unveiled and released to your people we thank you for the truth and the manifestation of your promises of your word oh God over our lives tonight God father we thank you oh God in our lives and over our families and over our loved ones God we thank you for the food we thank you for the clothing we thank you for the shelter 
Oh God, we thank you for paying the bills. We thank you for divine protection over your people tonight, God. Who are on this life tonight, God. We thank you for divine protection over them, covering your walls of fire according to Zechariah 2.5, God, that you place around us, God. We thank you for giving your angels charge over us and around us, oh God, to keep us in all our ways, God. In their hands, God, they bear us up, oh Lord, according to Psalms 91, 11, and 12. Father, we are not ungrateful, and we don't ever want to be known as an ungrateful or an unthankful people, oh God. We thank you, God, even in times, oh God, when we these didn't deserve your mercy when we did not deserve your forgiveness you still oh God was merciful and faithful and gave us forgiveness oh God you gave us another chance oh God tonight oh God I thank you for your word that was preached oh God I pray oh God that we will never worship mammon we will never worship money we repent oh God if we have ever worshiped mammon or money we repent to God if we have ever put money or the love or the craving or the hunger for money as an idol in our lives. We repent, oh God, every time we place and we honor and we serve, we serve money instead of serving you. God, tonight we repent with our hearts. We repent with our minds. We confess with our voices that we are sorry Forgive us, Lord Jesus. We will never allow money to be our God like this rich, foolish young ruler. We will never serve money, but money will serve us. We will never allow money or the love of money or the craving of money to deceive us with its greed and with its lust. But God, we will honor you. We will praise you. We will worship you with the money that you have entrusted in our lives and in our hands. And we will worship you the way we ought to. We will manage it well. Our hearts and our minds will be set on things above. And our checkbooks and our withdrawals will reflect our worship to you. We don't want to be found foolish like this rich, young, foolish man. We don't want to miss heaven or miss eternal life because of worshiping earthly material riches. Father, remind us daily through Holy Spirit that we are yours and we belong to you. And we will worship you in spirit and we will worship you in truth. With everything we have, we will worship and give you, Lord Jesus, all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. We will not rob you, but we will worship you. We will set the example, the godly example, for our children to follow, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we will give you what rightfully belongs to you. Forgive us for robbing you. Forgive us for cheating you. Forgive us for stealing. We don't want to miss heaven, God. We want eternal life. I want to thank God for you remaining online for this entire message. I share this message. You know why? Many people need to break free from the bondage that the devil has them in. And they need to know truth. Present day truth. Apostolic truth. Kingdom minded truth. That is able to set them free. And break them out of poverty. Into, an ab into a life of abundance. Stop worshiping money. And worship God with your money. Don't be like a rich foolish ruler. God bless you. Have a fantastic Friday night. And you can join us again on Sunday morning at 9 a.m. For another online service with praise, worship, and Holy Ghost preaching. God bless you. Love you all. Have a good night. God bless. Bye-bye.